Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In today's episode 39, I have some interesting AZ9 questions for you on Azure CDN, Azure Storage, Cosmos DB, NSG and many more. I will explain all these concepts while sharing the Microsoft documentation so that you can self-learn and also validate the answers. And friends, I always try to bring the latest and well-researched questions to you and that is why I always provide the legit Microsoft documentation so that you understand the reason behind picking an answer. And I am sure that you will appreciate these efforts by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. So let's begin our learning. So here comes the very first question for today. Question number 736. It says that which statements regarding Cosmos DB are correct? And you have to choose two options. Your options are API selection determines the account type. The second option is relationships can be defined. Third one is a structured schema is used. And lastly, we are given with encryption for data at rest is enabled by default. And the correct answer for this question is option A. API selection determines the account type and option D encryption for data at rest is enabled by default. And friends, in case you want to learn what is Cosmos DB, here is a quick documentation on it. And it says that Azure Cosmos DB is a fully managed no SQL and relationship database for modern app development. Azure Cosmos DB offers single digit millisecond response time, automatic and instant scalability along with guaranteed speed at any scale. Business continuity is assured with SLA backed availability and enterprise grade security. And what are the key benefits of Azure Cosmos DB? Well, Azure Cosmos DB helps you real time access with fast read and write latencies globally and throughput and consistency are backed by SLA. Also, multi-region writes and data distribution to any Azure region with just a click of a button. And you can independently and elastically scale storage and throughput across any Azure region even during unpredictable traffic bursts for unlimited scale worldwide. And we have done lot of questions on Azure Cosmos DB in the previous parts as well. So please do check out all those previous parts. And now let's move on to the next question. Question number 737. It says that which service below is Microsoft managed network security service in Azure that protects Azure virtual network resources. Your options are Azure VNet or virtual network, Azure Firewall, Network Security Group and the last one is Application Security Group. And the correct answer for this question is Option C, Network Security Group. And friends, we have done so many questions on all these services listed here. Lot of questions come from these services in AZ900 exam. So I encourage you to watch all the previous parts. Links for all the previous parts are available in the description box. Moving on to the next question, 738. It says content delivery network or also known as CDN allows you to reduce the traffic coming from a web server for static and unchanging file such as images, videos and PDFs. You have to tell whether this statement is correct. If yes, then you have to select yes. Otherwise, you have to select a no. So have you picked the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is yes. And this is because CDN definitely helps you to reduce traffic when it is coming from the web server for any static file such as images, videos and PDFs. So let's have a quick understanding on CDN or Content Delivery Network, which is a distributed network of servers that can efficiently deliver web content to the users. A CDN store cache network content on edge servers in point of presence or POP locations that are close to end users to minimize the latency. What are the benefits that CDN offers? Well, better performance and improved user experience for the end users, especially when applications where multiple round trips requests are required by the end users to load the content. And secondly, when you want to scale up and handle instant loads, such as start of the product launch event, for example, you may have some sale or promotion going on. Maybe let's say that you have a Diwali sale or maybe some independent sale or Christmas sale. All these are events when you want to scale up and make your application handle handle instant and high loads. In that case, CDN is a very handy tool. The third benefit that it offers is distribution of user requests and serving of content directly from edge servers so that less traffic gets sent to the origin server. And here you can also understand exact concept why this image and other details are also given. As always, links to all the documentation that I am referring in this episode is given in the description box. 
And here comes question number 739. It says Azure Active Directory is a network gateway that load balances user logins using CDN or content delivery network. Yes or no? And of course, this is not a correct statement. That's why no is the correct answer. And yes, friends, I missed to mention in the opening part of the video, but this would be our second last part of AZ900 2023 series. So after this part 39, I will take one more part, part 40, in which I will concentrate on Azure security related questions. And of course, please do not miss to subscribe to the channel as we are launching a new series, a new question and answer series on AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And you do not want to miss any notification of this AWS series. So subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon so that you get all the timely notifications. Moving on with the question number 740, it says that the Azure App Service is an HTTP based service for hosting web application, REST APIs and mobile backends. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is yes. So this is a true statement as you can use Azure App Service for hosting web application, REST API and mobile backends. Now quickly moving to the next question, question number 741 says that which services are part of Azure Storage Account Service? Your options are option A, Azure Table Storage, option B, Azure File Storage, option C, Azure Hard Drive, option D, Azure Queue Storage, option E, Azure Disk Storage, and lastly option F, Azure Blob Storage. And friends, please mind that you have to pick all the services that are part of Azure Storage Account. And let me reveal the answer and you can match up your answers with this. The first correct service is Azure Stable Storage. The second one is Azure File Storage. And then we have Azure Key Storage, which comes at option D. And the last correct service is option F, which is Azure Blob Storage. And you can validate the answer on this documentation. Here you can see what are the services. We have Azure Blobs, Azure Files, Azure Elastic Sand, which is not included as a part of our question, but never mind, you know this is a part of Azure Storage. And then we are given with Azure Queues, Azure Tables, and Azure Managed Disks. So now you are assured that our answer is correct. And here comes question number 742. It says that which node in Azure Portal should you use to assign a user a read role for a resource group? To answer, you have to select the node in the answer area. Here you can see this is the answer area and you are given with various roles or various nodes here and you have to pick the correct node. And the correct answer for this question is Access Control IAM. So Access Control IAM is the page that you typically use to assign user roles to grant access to the Azure resources. It is also known as Identity and Access Management IAM and appears in several locations in Azure Portal. As this is a very important service, my friends, to control the access management. So let me tell you how can you access this. So once you are in the Azure Portal, you can specify the scope of any resource at four levels from broad to narrow. And what are these four levels? So basically, you can start the access control or access management of any resource on management group. So this is the broadest level. And then you come to the subscription, one level down, resource group, one level more down. And lastly, you can control all the access on a resource, definitely on the resource level. And how exactly you do this? Well, of course, first you sign into the Azure portal, then in the search box, which is given at the top, here you search for the scope that you want to give access to that particular resource. For example, you can search for management group, subscriptions, resource group or any specific resource. Once you find it, then you have to click the specific resource for that scope and then you have to choose access control. Let me give you a screenshot from the Azure portal. Here you can see that I'm on the subscription level and here you can see this access control. So what I'm trying to demonstrate is that you can be on any level. You can be at management level. You can be at resource group level, subscription level, any level, the four levels that I just showed you. And you can control the access on that particular level that suits your application. Now let's move on with the next question. Question number 743 says that three keys are available in the properties blade of Azure Cognitive Services. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is no. Why? Because only two keys are available in the properties blade of Azure Cognitive Services. Quickly moving to the next question. Question number 744 says that you can use Network Security Group to configure network security as an extension of an application structure. 
yes or no and the correct answer for this question is no and in case you are wondering which service should you use to configure network security as an extension of application structure well that service is application security group moving on with the question number 745 it says the microsoft sentinel service is a scalable cloud native security information and event management and security orchestration automation and response which is short form as SOAR. So do you think this statement is a correct definition of Microsoft Sentinel? Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is yes. And in case you want to learn more on Microsoft Sentinel, then I will leave this documentation link in the description box. Moving on to the next question, question number 746. It says, why are two keys available in the properties blade of Azure Cognitive Services? And your options are, Key for Windows and Linux platforms. Key safekeeping. The third option is period key regeneration for security. And lastly, enhanced performance. Now, I hope you remember just a while back in question number 743, I asked you whether there are three or two keys available in Azure Cognitive Services. And the correct answer was two keys are available. Now, let's find out why these keys are needed. Well, the correct answer for this question is option P for key safekeeping. Moving on with the question number 747, it says a Microsoft SQL Server database that is hosted in cloud virtual machine is an example of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service. And the correct answer most definitely is infrastructure as a service. We have taken so many questions on virtual machine infrastructure as a service, PaaS and software as a service in the previous parts as well. I really encourage you to watch all these previous parts because there are gonna be a lot of questions from all these concept areas. Moving on with the question number 748, it says which storage service given below is best for serving images or documents directly to a browser and for streaming video and audio. Your options are Azure Blob Storage, Azure File Storage, virtual machine disk and last one is Q storage and the correct answer for this question is Azure Blob Storage. So whenever my friends you have a requirement to serve images or videos directly to the browser then in that case you can use Azure Blob Storage and you know what my friends there is one very cool use of Azure Blob Storage. So in case you are creating some static website and you have some images or audios or videos to be delivered on the browser in that case you can connect Azure Blob Storage as a base or as a storage for your images, videos, which can be directly streamed to your web browsers. A really handy and neat feature of Azure Blob Storage. Now coming to the question 749, it says a Microsoft SQL Server database that is hosted in the cloud and has software updates managed by Azure is an example of your options are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service or software as a service. Now friends, compare this question with the question number 747 that we just attended where we were talking about Microsoft SQL Server that was being hosted on virtual machine. Now I have told you many times that whenever you see virtual machine or something that is hosted on virtual machine using virtual machine, in that case, your answer should always be infrastructure as a service. However, in this question, we are talking about SQL Server database only, but this question says that this one is hosted in the cloud and the software updates are managed by Azure. And this is the hint that this is not infrastructure as a service because in this case, updates are managed by Microsoft Azure. So the correct answer for this question would be option B, platform as a service. And here comes question number 750. It says that you need to collect and automatically analyze security events from Azure Active Directory. What should you use? Your options are Azure Synapse Analytics. Option B is Azure AD Connect. Option C is Azure Key Vault. And lastly, we are given with Azure Sentinel. And the correct answer for sure for this question is option D. Azure Sentinel and you can use the same documentation that I showed in the question number 745 to gain more insights on Azure Sentinel. And friends, once again, I want to remind you that please do join me in the next video where I will take some very important questions on AZ900 related to Azure security. It will be fully dedicated video on Azure security, various tools, when to use and why to use them. And off late, just so you know that lot of questions have been starting to come from these sections.
and yes please like the video so that we are able to educate more and more people make sure to subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon as we are launching a new similar question and answer series on aws cloud practitioner exam that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching